You're watching the English newscast on Future Television. I'm Yumna Nelfel and these are today's top stories. The Ambassador of France, China, Russia, the UK, the US and the UN Special Coordinator meet with Prime Minister Tamam Salam reaffirming their support for the security of the country. A fragile truce in Syria has been extended for 48 hours under an agreement between Moscow and Washington, but still no sign of aid deliveries. And a Florida man who investigators say posted anti-Islamic material on social media was arrested on charges of setting fire to the mosque attended by the Orlando gunman. Thursday headlines here. The ambassadors of France, the People's Republic of China, Russia, the United Kingdom and the United States, as well as the UN Special Coordinator for Lebanon, met with Prime Minister Tamam Salam to reaffirm their strong support for the continued stability and security in the country. The ambassadors and the special coordinator commended the efforts of the prime minister to govern under increasingly difficult circumstances and conveyed their ongoing support for his work. Recalling the presidential statement of the Security Council of the 22nd of July, the ambassadors and the special coordinator expressed their deepening concern over the 27-month vacancy in the presidency, which continues to cause blockages in the Council of Ministers and to render the parliament incapable of passing critical legislation. I'll be reading a joint statement by the ambassadors of France, the People's Republic of China, Russian Federation, United Kingdom, United States and the United Nations Special Coordinator. The ambassadors of France, the People's Republic of China, Russian Federation, the United Kingdom, United States, the UN Special Coordinator for Lebanon met this morning Prime Minister Tamam Salam and reaffirmed their strong support for the continued stability and security of Lebanon. Ambassadors and Special Coordinator commended the efforts of the Prime Minister to govern under increasingly difficult circumstances and conveyed ongoing support for his work. They call on all Lebanese parties to, re to work responsibly in the national interest to enable government institutions to function effectively and to ensure that key decisions are taken at a time when mounting security, economic, social, as well as humanitarian challenges are facing Lebanon. Recalling the presidential statement of the Security Council of the 22nd of July, ambassadors and the special coordinator expressed their deepening concern over the 27-month vacancy in the presidency of Lebanon which continues to cause blockages in the Council of Ministers and to render Parliament incapable of passing critical legislation. They urged all Lebanese leaders to put aside their differences in the broader interest of Lebanon and its people and to act with leadership and flexibility to convene urgently a parliamentary session and to proceed with the election of a president. Ambassadors and the Special Coordinator underscored the Security Council's previous calls to all parties to recommit to Lebanon's policy of disassociation, consistent with the ministerial declaration of the current government and the Babda declaration of the 12th of June 2012. Ambassadors and the Special Coordinator discussed with Prime Minister Tamam Salam the question of the upcoming legislative legislative elections. They looked forward to the timely holding of the 2017 elections which will strengthen Lebanon's stability and preserve as well as renew the democratic nature of the Lebanese Republic. They welcomed the intent of the government of Lebanon to take steps to ensure that elections be held on time. Ambassadors and the Special Coordinator looked forward to the upcoming summit meetings on migration and refugees on the, in the margins and during the 71st General Assembly session in New York. Recognizing Lebanon's unique role in hosting refugees, they encouraged the government of Lebanon to show its global leadership and to put forward continued constructive proposals in this regard. End of statement. Future Movement Chief XPM Saad Hariri is describing the Iranian political and media war against Saudi Arabia as an episode in a dangerous series that only aims at exacerbating discord and threatening stability in the region. He was quoted as saying that after the responsible words of the Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei on the eve of Eid al-Adha, his foreign minister came out with a text full of hatred against Saudi. Zarif used an American media platform to incite the American administration, he said, and the American people against Saudi Arabia. 
Hariri added that this was not considered suitable by an Iranian leadership to express these kinds of views. Fragile truce in Syria has been extended for 48 hours under an agreement between Moscow and Washington, but still no sign of much-needed aid deliveries. The U.S. State Department said that the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov had spoken and agreed to prolong the ceasefire, which began on Monday. They recognized that despite sporadic reports of violence as a whole, the arrangement is holding and violence is significantly lower in comparison to previous days and weeks. These are the words of U.S. State Department spokesman Mark Toner. Earlier, Moscow had called for the ceasefire to be extended, despite accusing rebels of violating the truce 60 times since it came into force. Humanitarian access. That is what makes a difference for the people, apart from seeing no more bombs or mortar shelling taking place. On that one, we have a problem. Those facilitation letters, i.e. final permission for the UN to actually reach those areas, has not been received. That's a fact. It is particularly regrettable because normally during these days we are losing time. These are days which we should have used for convoys to move with the permit to go because there is no fighting. The Russian Federation is agreeing with us about this. So are the two co-chairs. This is something that requires to take place immediately. Coming up next, more world headlines when we return. Stay tuned. Welcome back. A Florida man who investigators say posted anti-Islamic material on social media was arrested on charges of setting fire to a mosque attended by the gunman who committed the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. The case is being prosecuted as a hate crime under Florida law and the suspect, Joseph Michael Schreiber, 32, faces at least 30 years in prison if convicted of committing Monday's arson attack, according to the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office. Schreiber is accused of starting the blaze that heavily damaged the Islamic Center of Fort Pierce, a place of worship for gunman Omar Mateen, before he shot 49 people dead and wounded 53 others at a gay nightclub in June. Mateen himself was killed by law enforcement officers at the end of the shooting in Orlando, about 160 kilometers northwest of the Atlantic coast town of Fort Pierce. Former Secretary of State Colin Powell revealed distaste for both U.S. presidential candidates, but leveled his most pointed criticism at Republican Donald Trump in hacked emails leaked by a group American intelligence officials suspect is linked to Russia. In an email, Powell confirmed the authenticity of the thousands of hacked messages, but declined further comment. In one of the leaked emails, Powell, a Republican, called Trump a national disgrace and an international pariah who allied himself with racists questioning whether President Barack Obama was born in the United States. The new batch of leaked messages, some from as recent as late August, has renewed concern in Washington about hackers meddling on behalf of Russia in the November 8 election and U.S. politics. The White House so far has refrained from publicly blaming the attacks on Russia. With eight weeks to go before Election Day, U.S. Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump campaigned in Ohio and touted his lead over his Democratic rival in the same state. Bloomberg released a survey of Ohio voters on Wednesday, which showed Trump ahead by five points. And Quinnipiac University surveys released shortly after Labor Day showed an even contest in Florida, with Trump up four points. Clinton, who has taken a few days off from campaigning, is currently recovering from non-contagious bacterial pneumonia. So this morning, uh, CNN came out, or Bloomberg came out, and we were 48 to 43. Up. And then we just got one a little while ago, and that was a big one, and that was 48 to 43. So these polls are seeming to be pretty close. We have one that just came out in Florida, a big one, CNN. I believe it was CNN. And that one is up three in Florida. We're up sort of like everywhere. We're getting to be everywhere. You think this is easy? 
Oh, you think this is so easy? In this beautiful room that's 122 degrees? It is hot, and it's always hot when I perform because the crowds are so big. These rooms were not designed for this kind of a crowd. Folks, you think Hillary would be able to stand up here for an hour and do this? I don't, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. Don't forget, when I announced, seems like a long time ago, 17 people running, I was the non-professional. Everyone said, oh, Trump has never done this before. How could he possibly survive? These are the greatest professionals in the business. Bum, bum, bum. Now we have one left. Now we have one left. And in all fairness, she's lying in bed getting better, and we want her better. We want her back on the trail, right? We want her back on the trail. This ends our bulletin for today. Now a reminder of our headlines. The ambassadors of France, China, Russia, the UK, the US and the UN Special Coordinator meet with Prime Minister Tamam Salami affirming their strong support for the security of the country. A fragile truce for Syria extended for 48 hours under an agreement between Moscow and Washington but still no sign of much needed aid deliveries. And the Florida man who investigators say posted anti-Islamic material on social media is arrested on charges of setting the fire to a mosque attended by the Orlando gunman. Those are your Thursday headlines live on Future Television. I'm Yumna Nofa signing off. Have a good one.